Hello everyone. Previously in the chapter of plant tissues, we have discussed some specialized tissues needed by the plant to carry out functions like growth, photosynthesis. Now along with these functions, a very important function of the plant is the circulation or transport of food and water to all the parts of the plant which includes even the most highest or lowest part of that plant. But unlike humans and animals, plants lack a circulatory system, say like blood, veins, artery, to provide all the nutrients to its parts. So what is it that makes them transport food and water to the entire plant body? They have a specialized form of tissue to carry out this function called the vascular tissue, which is nothing but a conducting or a transporting tissue. Like any other living organism, plants will also have the same requirements of food and water to live. So talking about food, by now we know that plants prepare their own food through a process called photosynthesis. But what about water? From where do they get their required water? For that, we need to look at the water transport system in a plant. We have all seen rain water that falls on the plant. Now this water will not be absorbed by the plant as the plant has a waterproof coating on its entire plant surface called as epidermis. So the water that falls on the ground is absorbed by the roots of the plant and then supplied to all the parts of that plant. This reminds me that many a times people water their house plants by pouring water on top of the plant. This may help in keeping the plant fresh and clean, but it doesn't fulfill the plant's need for water. So now we know that we must water the plant close to the roots. This may help in reducing water wastage. So coming back to the main question here, which is how does the water that is absorbed by the roots in the lowermost portion of the plant get transported to the various parts of the plant? And that too, against gravity. To perform this important function, plants have a tissue which is made up of different types of cells. And by now we know, when a tissue is made up of different types of cells, we call it as a complex tissue. So in comparison to this tissue, last time we discussed a tissue named parenchyma, which we said was a simple tissue, as it was just made up of one type of cells. Here I want you to carefully note the difference between a simple permanent tissue and a complex permanent tissue. So moving ahead, the function of this tissue can be considered to be similar to the pipelines of a building, which carry water that is stored in the tank below, up to the many apartments against gravity. The tissue with a similar function in any plant is called as xylem, and it will be present where transporting of water is required. So in this tree, it will mainly be present in the wooden part, which serves as the transporting medium for water to travel from the roots to the leaves. So because of this tissue, water will also reach the topmost leaf, including all the parts of that leaf, as xylem is also present in the mid rib of that leaf. This complex tissue named xylem is made up of four different types of cells. Let's look at them one by one in detail. The first one is vessels. Now vessels are the most important cells in this type of tissue. Structurally, they are like a row of cells placed end to end which are specialized in performing the function of water transport. So now you must be wondering, what about the other three types of cells? What do they do? The second type is the tracheids, which are long cells that taper at both ends. These cells not only aid in water transport, but because of their structure, they also provide support to the plant. Then the next one is xylem parenchyma. 
Now, if you remember, we have said that parenchyma stores food. So, quite evidently, xylem parenchyma also performs the same function of food storage. And lastly, there are xylem fibers. These cells are thread-like cells that provide support to the tissue as well as the plant. So here we've completed looking at how water is transported from the roots to all the parts of the plant. But what do you think? All this water that is absorbed by the plant is permanently stored in the plant? No. Because of the sun's heat, excess of water in the plant is lost from the leaf surface in the form of water vapour in a process called transpiration. So indirectly, it is this transpiration process that creates a suction force that helps the roots to pull water from the ground and thus transports it to all the parts of the plant. But a point to be noted here is that if the amount of water lost by the plant is more than the amount of water that can be absorbed by the roots, the plants will get dehydrated which results in wilting and death of the plant. But it's not only that lack of water can cause death in a plant. Excessive amount of water in the soil, that is like overclogging of water near the roots, can also result in death of the plant. So it's very important to have a perfect balance between the rate of transpiration and the rate of absorption of water by the roots. But besides water, plant also requires food to survive. In a plant, the green part, that is the leaves, make food for the plant with the help of a green pigment called chlorophyll. Then it uses sunlight, air and water. Now all the food made by the leaves have to reach to all the parts of the plant, right? The food made in the leaves will be transported to these parts which includes the lowermost part of that plant, that is root cells, as these roots need energy to absorb the water from the ground. So you see, it's like a cycle that continuously keeps occurring in a plant. The food in the form of sugar, which is made in the leaves, is transported with the help of another type of complex tissue called phloem. Again, since it's a complex tissue, it is made up of four different types of cells. The first and the most important type of cells in this type of tissue are the sieve tubes, which are attached from end to end. Just as the name suggests, sieve means something with perforations. And because of these perforations, sugars are transported all throughout the plant body. To accompany them in this same function, there are the second type of cells, that is the companion cells, which are arranged next to the sieve tubes. The third one is phloem parenchyma. All the food is stored in this phloem parenchyma and along with storage, it also transports food in the horizontal direction, that is lateral transport to the neighbouring cells. And lastly, just like xylem fibers, we have phloem fibers that offer support and mechanical strength to the plant. So we have seen how food and water is transported in all the parts of the plant. So next time when you see a plant, take a moment and observe it and appreciate this amazing function performed by it.